everyone, welcome back. Have you ever wondered how to properly splice takes in your classical guitar recordings? Well, I'll show you how, so let's get into it. But first, don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already, it really helps support the channel. All right, so learning how to do proper crossfades is probably the most important skill when it comes to learning how to edit and doing your own classical guitar recordings. So crossfades allow you to combine multiple takes into one complete master take. So say you do one, two, three, four, hopefully not 50 complete takes of your track, and you want to combine them into one master track, you can do that using crossfades. And basically, you can think of crossfades more or less like stitching your audio together. They basically microscopically fade in and out, so that way they eliminate pops and clicks in your recordings. If you've ever been messing around and you kind of do a cut, and then you combine two sections of audio, and it makes a little pop or click as you play through, this is how you fix that. I can't stress enough how important this skill is, because if you're ever gonna record an album and say you're not even gonna mix it yourself, you really wanna save some time and some money doing the crossfades on your own, and then you can send it off to get mixed remotely. And the big benefit to this is one, it saves you money, but two, you actually have ultimate control over how the final product sounds because you're the one comping the takes together or piecing them together to get your final master take and in the end, really just realize your vision for the piece. So I'm gonna jump into a session and then demonstrate how this works. All right, so to demonstrate this, what I'm gonna do is take the C major scale that I recorded one note at a time and then use crossfades to stitch it together to make one complete scale and more or less make it sounded like I recorded it that way in one pass. So this is what it sounds like completely unedited as I recorded it. and so on and so forth, every single note, just a one octave C major scale. Now the key to doing proper crossfades is that you always wanna cut at the beginning of a transient. So a transient is basically one of these. We're really lucky as classical guitarists because our instrument is plucked, meaning it has a really high transient. Every time you pluck a note, you see a huge spike. That's the transient. Uh, if you watch a lot of recording videos, you'll hear that word thrown around a lot. That's what that means. So every time you pluck a note, that's the initial attack of the note, and then you have the decay. So when you make a cut, you really, really want to time it to where it's at the beginning of a transient to avoid any kind of weird artifacts, because if you're playing a real guitar piece and not just like a one octave C major scale, more or less, you're probably going to have some bass notes and some other things ringing over. And depending on the volume difference between the takes, it may or may not mesh. So when you start at the beginning and ends of phrases, it makes it a little bit easier rather than trying to like split a take in the middle of like a sustaining arpeggio or something like that. So let me go to the beginning and I'll kind of demonstrate this. So my first note, just a C major. And what I'm gonna do is just kind of zoom in a little bit. And I like to zoom in. You really don't wanna like guesstimate when it's like zoomed out. Cause if I cut like right here, for instance, it looks kind of, it actually doesn't look all that great, but say this looked good to you you zoom in and you're like oh man that's really far away from the actual like start of the note and you have to get super obsessive about it you just kind of you know more or less want to get at the beginning of the note but what i do is i zoom in and then say somewhere around here you can see the note attack this is probably my nail noise or something and what i'm going to do is just split the clip so this will be a little bit different depending on which dog you're using uh in studio one i have this assigned to uh, the number three on the keyboard just kind of a shortcut but if you're using Logic, you're using Reaper, you're using Ableton, you know, it's the exact same process. You just might have to find where exactly that is in your DAW. So I make the, the splice and I'm gonna play the clip and just see how long I want the note to ring out. Uh, if I really wanted to, I could turn this into like a, a quarter note scale or a 16th note run or something, but I'll just play it, kind of guesstimate. This doesn't have to be perfect for the demonstration. So say I want it to ring out that long, I'm just gonna cut it again here. And this is the important part at the beginning of the transient. For this demonstration, I'm just gonna cut it here just depending on how fast I want the scale to go. So now what I'm gonna do is go to my next note, which is D, and more or less cut here. Now I have something that's, it's kind of a handy trick, it's called ripple editing. And in Studio One, it's turned on by this button. Your DAW may or may not have ripple editing, but it does save some time if you're doing things sequentially. Uh, if this was a, like an actual classical guitar piece where I have multiple takes, you know, I might have one take here and then one take out over here, one take out over here, and I have to cut, splice, and drag, and it takes forever. But if I have ripple editing, I can basically make a cut here, 
make a cut here. And then what I can do is just delete it in the middle and you'll see this will just automatically snap to the other side like that. And it just saves some time. If you're doing this you know, for hours and hours and hours, it does save quite a bit of time. Now you'll notice, and this is a good demonstration, I didn't quite cut it perfectly. So there's probably gonna be a weird delay and there's no crossfade on it yet. So you hear how odd it sounds if you do it wrong. You hear that little pop and click? That's exactly what we want to avoid. So I'm gonna make that just a little bit more precise here. Let's try to zoom in on the very, very start of that note. That looks better. And let's go ahead and delete that. Now to apply the crossfade, in Studio One, I just highlight both clips and then I have X on the keyboard and you can see it assigned a literal crossfade where it's fading out, fading in, so you don't hear that really awful click. So now when I play both, I'm gonna start here. No pop, no click, nothing. It sounds more or less like I actually played it that way. So if I wanted to do it again, I could kind of zoom in here like that. And I don't know how long, we'll try to keep it about the same, I guess. Eh, that's about right. Let's cut it around here. I'll delete that. Highlight both clips, hit X, crossfade, and let's hear what we have so far. And we'll do it again. And we'll zoom in right at the beginning of that transient. Delete, like that. Gonna zoom back out here. Don't forget the crossfade. And let's see what it sounds like. So we have four notes in succession. Like that. Now you can already begin to see something that I talk about in a lot of my videos as far as editing goes. You really honestly don't want to play an entire scale note for note because it sounds fairly coherent until you get to here. And because I recorded these separately and it wasn't an actual coherent musical thought, what ends up happening is you'll get like one note that's like way louder than the other one, like this one. It just kind of goes boom, 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 really loud. And it sounds awful. So you can, that's kind of a dead giveaway that I, you know, honestly didn't record this perfectly. Still sounds okay, but if it was an actual piece, it'd sound a little bit weird. So what I'm gonna do is kind of speed this up, go through and do the entire thing, and you'll hear what it sounds like at the end. All right, so let's have a listen. So you can kind of see since I did it kind of fast, you know, the length of the notes isn't quite right. You know, like this one's really short, this one's really long. You know, if this is like an actual piece of music, I might, you know, take some time and make sure that's fixed. But that's more or less how you would do crossfades. I try to time them to where they're at the beginning of the transient, make sure the crossfade's good. Usually they're pretty good just by adding a basic crossfade. Very rarely, if you're trying to splice something that, you know, probably shouldn't be spliced in the first place, you might actually have to go through and edit the crossfade itself by dragging it, you know, one way or the other, you know, to try to cover up so if you can see, if I drag it to the left, it's kind of, you know, making this a little bit quieter. If I drag it to the right, and if you make it too drastic, you'll actually hear this kind of like shoop sound in between the clips. And in that case, you know, if you have to play with it, uh, my recommendation would be if you actually have this extra material recorded, like I recommend, just don't do it. Just try to find some spot that's at the beginning of a phrase with a nice clean cut so you can hide it. So that way you just don't have any kind of like weird artifacts and stuff like that. But more or less, that's how you do crossfades. All right, that's my time. If you have any questions, comments, or topics you want me to cover in future videos like this one, please leave them in the comments down below. I'll see you guys in the next video.